Good morning, everybody. On today's episode, we're going to be working on Jeffrey's car. Again. All right. We're going to be doing uh, VF uh, motor mount bushings because uh, his have already uh, gone bad. So, as always, this is Pinchy House Garage. Let's get to work. Bushings on this beautiful bay, by the way, um, have gone bad on him, and uh, Jeffrey here is actually going to show us. Let's do it. So, um, he's been having a clunk, right? Pardon? You've been having a clunk? No, it's just, well, yeah, I would have a clunk when I would go out of park to drive or reverse, and I could kind of just feel like a, you know, a thump, and mm -hmm. I had a Timmy come by last week, and he, uh, he verified for me and we both looked at it together and I'll go ahead and demonstrate how the engine actually moves where it shouldn't move. It should be yeah. nice and stiff. Yep. And this is an automatic, guys, but you can still see the same difference between a stick and an automatic. You know, bushings are bushings. So I'll go ahead and show yeah. you. And so he pointed out earlier which one it was. And you'll see right here. You can see where my finger is. You can actually move the bushing. And you shouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> and then the washer actually was kind of moving the other week too, but yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, VFE Engineering—they're out of Anaheim. They actually sell these uh, forty dollars a side, so twenty bucks each, and they shipped them for fourteen bucks next day. You could go on other websites, but I did notice they do a markup, so you might as well just go to the actual website of the manufacturer. You know, if it's VFE or yeah, whoever. this is like the one time that uh. You can save money. You can actually save money by ordering direct from the manufacturer. Uh, on ECS tuning, they're uh, literally a hundred bucks for the set, uh, or ninety dollars or something like that. I forgot what it was exactly, but they're more expensive. And you'll see right here. You see how it move? You can see it move a little bit. Put it back in park. See the engine just move forward and back. Oh, there, there you go. That's a good one. So yeah, you're, this thing is definitely due for bushings. All right, you're good. So you saw that. Then that means we got to get to work. And so first things first, get the car on a piece of wood, about a two inch piece of wood on both sides. Um, that'll give you a little bit extra height. Get a jack underneath, and with the piece of wood, you'll see that, and it's going to be hitting the oil pan. Uh, get it as centered as possible to the by the transmission, and all you're going to do is just give it a little bit of tension, just enough so the engine goes up about a millimeter or two. That's it. You don't need very much, and then you want to break loose the. Uh, the bolts here. You are going to have to take off the actual bracket and the top mount for this so everything can come off. Now keep in mind guys, you know I've done a lot of deletions so some of you guys might have like the washer fluid reservoir right here or the battery over here so it might take you guys a little bit more to take some things apart uh, to get to these uh, certain areas. I have my power steering reservoir relocated down here and I know stock it comes about right right here so yeah. Um, I'm sure Al has some write-ups on that on mm -hmm. how to remove all that so just you might have to you know uh, piggyback off those videos that's correct so let's get to work all right so <laughs> unfashionable or uh, un pinch Al like we're gonna actually use an impact gun which won't work not enough power e sorry <laughs> so guess what we're gonna do we're gonna use real tools <laughs> <laughs> All right, we tried. 
So we know now that his impact gun is not powerful enough for a little bolt. Air compressor light. <laughs> so um, VF uses a 15 and a 16 millimeter um, uh, bolts on these. I'll hold, it. I'll hold the oh, for the fork room because it's. I think it's going to slip. There you go. Nice. And then sixteen. No, these are fifteen as well. There you go. I have to use a shorter one. All right. Mm. I can just move the sensor. Yeah, I'll plug that. See if that works. There you go. Come on. That one's actually already loose. What? Great! <laughs> My engine falls off on the highway. Uh, that's a 15. Alright. And then the top ones are 16, I believe, yep. correct? 16 mil, 15 mil. All metric for these engines. For these cars. For these automobiles. Vehiculars. Yeah, those were pretty loose, huh? Well, the VF ones don't go on as tight as the uh, as the uh, OEM ones. Oh wow, look at that! The metal's coming out. Yeah. Well, it's scraping the top of the. Uh, you just ruined my pretty mounts. Oh. You wanted to do this job. Yeah, hey, I signed that contract, that waiver. Al breaks, he don't buy. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, so. And then we can just. Wow. And just to say, uh, these mounts have been in here about 10 years. And I kind of just noticed the, uh, the clunk mm, recently. About six months or so so I think they lasted a good you know ooh, give or take 40 50 thousand miles so I don't do a lot of driving we do a lot of long driving though yeah we used to go to you know show in Vegas that we all like but some people are well, you also gone to didn't you go Big like, Bear once twice you need to go to Big Bear again dude. I, I would love Big Bear this year are you gonna go I'll go if you go I'm always, I always go. It's like my favorite show. They just got upset. They took away the whole like festival. They, it's not the same week anymore. No, it's, the, not, it's not the same Oktoberfest, like actual yeah. Oktoberfest. And you know I like to drink Cervase. Cervase? Cervasa. Cerveza. So that, you know, my Spanish, I'm still still <laughs> learning. I'm new to s <laughs> Southern California. Yeah, you've been here forever. Dude. Yeah, you I know. <laughs> if you live here, you should speak English, God damn it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people do. And a lot of people that actually... Uh, have problems, you know, they, they actually put the effort into learning how to speak it too, you know. But it takes a while. You know, it's not like an instant language. Ooh, look at that thing just move. I just want to delete my mounts. Put them upside down so you don't see them. Now, I did read on the website, they say you should replace all the bolts because, you know, new hardware, these could stretch. Well, the VF ones don't stretch. Okay. So we'll just use the same ones and maybe put yeah. some Loctite. Do you have any Loctite? Because I did come loose. I'm not supposed to put Loctite on them. Well, you saw that one was loose, so. Yeah, well, it probably wasn't put down as tight. Well, Jesus. Jeez. Jeez. Oh, good. Nice little washer there. Put some polish on there. Okay. You probably don't have to take off the bottom one. All right, now that we have them out, there's no... They're not cracking. There's nothing cracked, and they feel... Soft. They feel the same, actually. I mean, I don't know. Here, I let know. me scrunch that one. These are a lot harder. Here, put that one in. Here, here match it up. This one. So, here. Squeeze that one in. There you go. No, they're, they're, these are hard. These are soft. Soft. These are really, really hard. Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, it's nothing too crazy noticeable like the Volkswagen ones. I mean, once the stock Volkswagen ones go, are you, you can sure just... these are the same ones? Yeah. Okay. Here's an obvious difference. <laughs> Height. One got shorter, one's taller. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're... No, look at them. Somewhat. 
You can see them. You can actually one shorter, one taller. Yeah. That's yeah. what happens with polyurethane, though. They actually compress. So with heat and all that over time, they compress. And then this got dirty right here. Who knows what that's from? That's Wear and tear. From the, that's just from the motor. The motor mount rusting. I got some polish in the car. I guess I can go for it. Might as well since we're here. But I don't know if I do. I might have to borrow yours. I got some. Yeah, we'll get that going. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, the. The gist of it uh, for one side, don't take both of them off, just do one side at a time. That way you can move your jack over to the side that's going to have like different tension on it. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty much it. We're going to show you the torque sequences for it and then work on the next side. Got it? Done. Alright, so after Jeff polished all his uh, aluminum, uh, pretty much what you're going to need to do is to assemble it. Um, so you have this one and then you have two different bushings there's a small one and a big one uh, easiest way to tell is that one's an 1191 and one's an 1190 the 1191 goes down then you mount your top part or bracket right here and you put the small one on top sandwiched together like that I'm going to use this. This is the one that we used up here. Put everything by hand. Don't try to like torque it down immediately. You just need to get it all started. As long as you didn't touch the motor and push it, it should line up immediately the way it was before. Maybe. All because we um, messed around with some things. But remember, you have to put everything in by hand. Never use an impact gun or anything like that to start these. Because you will cross thread these like nothing. These are easy to cross thread, so be very, very careful. You don't want to break a mount or anything like that when you're doing this. Don't put those in yet. We're going to have to slide the engine a little bit. If you can get about four or five threads by hand, or even more, do so. And then we're going to slide the engine over. Alright, and your buddy over here is going to... Remember what I told you, it's got to go in a couple threads by hand. It's going to have to turn. Let's see cold. Ready? I'm going to pull this back. Keep going that way, push the bracket. There, we're at that. Hold on. Mm -hmm. You need something to pry this way. There you go. Giant extension. Yeah, just push it. Here, I can push you pit in. Right. Since you're already there. Here. Use your hair. Well, before you do that, mm -hmm. make it easier on yourself. Down. As long as it goes in easy, it's all that matters. Yep. Okay. So now we got all the brackets in. Now we just tighten everything down. Does it uh, matter what side you do first? Maybe the bottom first? No, because everything's already down. It's kind of just... Okay. Oh yeah, look it. It's done. <laughs> do that right now. So we used a breaker bar to loosen. Use a ratchet to tighten yep. and then we torque them down I don't know what the specs are but we'll check online mm -hmm. I'm guessing it's somewhere about you know 80 foot pounds probably now when we tighten these do we kind of do them in a star pattern no or? because they're, they're not uh, all on the same surface okay. so it doesn't matter which way you torque them down 
but I could just do it to where it's snug and then torque them at the end, correct? You got it. Alright, so get this one to where it's all at the bottom. And we'll torque that. And the one I'm doing right now is actually a little loose. The coolant bottle is sort of in the way. You could always loosen it just to tilt it maybe a half an inch. Because uh, you don't want to cockeye the bolt. Well, you can't anymore. You have to do it in by hand, remember? Would you mind holding those lines? Do the top one. Different size, I thought. No. Oh, yeah, the ones those on the, two. Those on the, down there. That's right. 15 and 16. Remember? Remember? Oh, 15 and 16. Look good, a little polish on there. Now I wait. It's I shinier than the rest of the day. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. No. That is. All right. When I get home, I'll do that. <laughs> For a car that you drive once a week. If that. If that. If that. All right. This guy here might just have to slide a coolant line out of the way a bit. You know this is funny, guys. This is the first. Um, what is it, a uh, guest star that actually is doing the DIY for me? I'm excited about that, it's less work. Let me come over here and look at this real quick. Just right. look at how the bracket lines up with the with the mount coming out of the engine. See how it's kind of slanted? Well, we gotta turn it, because this has to turn. Uh, let's see here, I uh, loosen this one. Mm -hmm. Glad I saw that, looks funny. Tighten which one? The back one. Copy that. Yeah, it looks a little better. Come on. Go, 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 go. So it is kind of a two person job. You know, so if you have a wife or child, they can kind of you got it? help you out. Yeah. Okay, that should be good. Yep. I'll turn the other one. And the reason why we did that is because the top bracket, it was just slanted slightly on the, uh, I guess, the main bracket. That comes out of the block, and it didn't look right to me. So I it wasn't it wasn't straight. Wasn't straight. It was there just you go. it was like a slight forty-five degree angle. Doesn't look good. Okay. All right, now everything else gets torqued. And then we're done for one side, and then we gotta do the next side. All right, so we'll look up the torque specs, and we'll keep these in case you want to play some hockey. You know, no. here in Southern California, that's always popular. Okay, so now we looked up the torque specs. Uh, this one, these these three right here, so the back one, the top, and these are all 30 foot pounds. And the two back ones are 44 uh, uh, foot pounds. So go for it, Jeff. I think we do the bottom ones first. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There that's, you that's go. That's one. Number two. That one's gonna take a while because you're gonna be compressing the uh, the bushing a little bit. The polyurethane. Yep. What part of the earth does polyurethane come from? Nowhere. Like what it's country man -made. of origin? It's man-made, buddy. Man-made. Women didn't make it. Probably. And that's it. That's the top. And then we'll adjust to we'll what was change it? Forty-four. It to... Yep. Forty-four. We checked online. We used the Volkswagen website, the Vortex, which was a very good encyclopedia dictionary of anything Volkswagen. Not sure if too many people use it anymore. No, it's broken. What's broken? The Vortex? Yeah. You can't use a... The Vortex broke? Yeah, like they locked you out of your username and password like three years ago and everyone just couldn't figure it out and I just stopped using it really for posting things. But Facebook Marketplace is really good on selling and buying things these days. But for knowledge, unfortunately, yep. it's kind of hard nowadays. You don't have a place to reference anything. And you can use Vortex, but all the links are broken. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Well, they, they changed their like, security features with the um, photo bucket. It was weird. I thought the Russians hacked it or something. No. I don't think Russians care for Volkswagens. <laughs> okay, kids. So we got the engine side done. Yeah, and this is all. Remember, 30 
and 44 foot-pounds. And then don't forget to put any sensors back on or if you disconnected any other components. But before you do that, you might want to button it up, ch check the other side, start the car, drive it around, see how everything you know works and feels before you mm -hmm. put everything back back. All right. All right, that's done. Now we're going to work on the transmission side. And on this side, a little bit of extra work is involved because you got an intake in the way, you got the uh, waterfall. So we're going to be showing you how to remove all this out of the way before we actually get to the mount itself. And we will shine yep, those ones. Going. So now uh, Jeff is going to be removing the intake. Now remember, if it's a factory intake, you might have that big box here. And it just clamps you over. Just this one off. It's just a big mess. So you say from right here with the mouth? Yeah. All right. So we'll have more room. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll disconnect it with the mouth attached to the filter. Yep. Just unplug the sensor. Just unplug the sensor. Just give it a little wiggle. And well, it's in there pretty deep. So we might have to I'll just pull it up and bend it. Let's find out. There wow. You go. Pretty easy peasy. There you go. So now you got access to the two bolts right here on the side. But we need to get access to this one on top. Um, so you're going to have to take off the little waterfall right here. So this just has like a little rubber grommet right here. You can pull this back and just out of the way. And then these have two clips on this side. And if you walk it down, it's got two more right here on the bottom and two on the sides. And then there's a hole. There's an access hole. I'll show you guys. Right here to get that one bolt down here at the bottom. And then you have another access hole here or just try to figure out how to get to that <laughs> some other way um, yeah so we're gonna get to that in just a moment uh, move your jack down here so we're gonna move it over to the transmission side Give it a couple pumps, and that's it. And leave it alone, and then now I do the transmission bracket. Now it's supported, just like that. Okay, so now, yeah. So come on, Jeff. Let's get these bolts off. All right. So which side are we taking off first? Right. I'll hold you. You push. Not push, but. Oh, well, that came off pretty easy. Sorry. Wow. Well, you have a breaker bar, so it's supposed to make it easier. Uh, Harbor Freight? <laughs> I don't know where this one came from. I think this is a Roman still. Because <laughs> he actually has your handle for your... Yeah. So he's using your handle for your jack as his breaker bar. So Roman, you should probably buy your own breaker bar. <laughs> this is his breaker bar. <laughs> oh, well, I'll buy a breaker bar. I have so you can get one. your handle back. Right? Okay, so that's done. Now we need to get the 16 down here. Now we're going to use the normal one, uh, not a breaker bar one. That's not uh -oh. going to fit. No, it's over here. It's right here. Not going to fit. So with this one, cram it in the hole and then go underneath and put your socket like that. Make it easy. Yep. and loosey-goosey this one you can actually fit right here on the side here Jeff What's that? hold this like that right there this one will fit right here on the side just give it a little
that one's going to be a little funkier. Yeah. Maybe I just have to ask so. Take this one back off again. Uh, I gave you the big 18. And all those came off pretty much the same. One didn't feel any looser than the other, nope. like on the one we had over. Yeah, over there on the other side. So I guess it's good. Maybe every now and then check your uh, your bolts. Make sure they're all tight. You know, over time, vibration. Things can loosen. Mm -hmm. Especially with these mounts, a lot of things actually can loosen because they're very <laughs> stiff. Yeah. So definitely pay attention to stuff over time. Because you... I actually had the bolt you're loosening right now actually snapped about six years ago. It was the VF bolt that's supplied with the kit, and I just put factory ones back in. Well, actually, a shop did up north. that and then the other bracket just two 16 mils and then pull them out. Jeff finished polishing his metal so what you're going to want to do is first lay down the bottom the base plate. Uh, put the big bushing first in it nothing else just like that and then um, you'll see on this motor mount there's uh, a thick side and then there's a not a thick side so you want this mount to be going to the right, not to the left, because this will push the bracket too far out, and it won't line up correctly on the on here. So put that in all by hand. Get your bolts. Just throw them in by hand. Don't do anything special with them. Just like the other side. Yep. A little more challenging, a little less room to get your fingers and knuckles in there. So. Okay, so once you have that, you want to use, this is the next bracket. You're just going to slide it on and then cram the bushing in there. And then the plate and then the one bolt that goes on top of that. And then again, check the tranny, make sure it didn't shift. Which it probably will. It always does. Yeah, it always does. But well, this is why we leave them loose, so we can figure out the adjustment here. No, you don't need to move that. Uh, we just got to see. So the transmission here is shifted about a couple degrees. Because you're supposed to have it around here. And that's probably why it was snagging on his, on, on yours. Oh, back in the day? Mm-hmm. That's why it's all threaded right there, because mm -hmm. they jammed it. So, we're going to try to do... Once you pull it out, I'll just try to no, drop no, no, it no, in. No, 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 Hold on, I'm almost there. Mm -hmm. Let's come towards me. We'll put this one in first. Right there. So a little bit in there. And you'll see. And then we're gonna grab a flyhead screwdriver, cram it in here, and then pry this way. And that'll give us the tension that we need to go and line up the motor mount correctly. I got it. I need you to put Drop that on. So you'll see right here. And put it through here, fly ahead. You're going to pry a little bit. And you're going to try to get that. It's going to be a little difficult because it's kind of curved. So, hold on. You just, you can keep doing this until you find the, go, angle that works for you. And 
doesn't feel like it's... Okay, if it's not, then take it out really quick. And just repeat the process over and over until you get it right. Make sure it doesn't go in cross-threaded, okay guys? So, motor mount's now in. Um, we had a torque DC, since he's using OEM bolts here, you shouldn't be using OEM bolts, it should be uh, the VF bolts, so same specs as before, 44 and 30 all around. Uh, that's it, and then reverse the process, you know, put your intake back in and uh, your rain tray or your waterfall, all that has to be put back in and then um, give her a quick test and see if the engine doesn't shimmy anymore. But you should be good. Everything should be nice and snug. So you saw the before uh, video, so, well, we showed you during the DIY. So now he's going to go over there and um, turn on the car and put it in, for, in, in, in drive and in uh, reverse until we can see if the engine doesn't clunk anymore or like kind of pivot because that's what it was doing before. Ah, nice, no movement at all. There you go. Still got a little bit of movement. You probably have to replace the dog bone too. The dog bone bushing. Yeah, because you have a lot of this movement. But no more of this. No more clunking. So the next DIY will be uh, how to replace a dog bone mount. <laughs> yeah, dog bones do. But your shit don't, your stuff don't move anymore at all. So that's good. So there you have it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching Pinchy Al's Garage with Al and Jeffrey. Thanks, guys. Uh, and uh, we'll we're gonna see his car back again for a DIY on uh, the dog bone. Different options on that. Mm -hmm. You can either replace the whole dog bone or just replace the bushings. And I guess on your car, you did some different things on bushings. So we'll talk uh, options and definitely uh, get that taken care of. Yep. All right. Peace out, guys.